For lots of people, getting a higher rank in the finals is their main goal. It shows their achievements and it's one step closer to competitive play. But it usually takes people a while to climb to higher ranks. So today, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple things to consider for your ranked tournaments. Well hey guys, I'm Krimi, and if you want to get better at the finals and watch some funny challenges, consider subscribing. Today we're talking about 5 key principles to help you climb. But just for a quick bonus tip, focus is a big thing. If you're just going into your games willy nilly, going and playing over and over and over again, you're not going to be able to climb as fast as what you would want. You also want to focus to learn faster to get you to where you want to be. I also want to say you should also focus on one or two classes and one or two guns on those classes. You will get so much better if you play only a specific class with a specific weapon. You'll be able to get used to the movement, the height, the recoil, health and damage those classes and weapons can output. Letting you subconsciously know so much more information and allowing you not to worry about basic gameplay and letting you think more about the game sense and strategy to win. But with that said, let's get into it. Positioning. Positioning in the finals is quite hard to understand, but it's something that can easily win you more fights in games. The key takeaways are being in a position where you can hit enemies and they can't hit you. And also not overextending while forcing other teams to overextend. Let's break this down. Hitting enemies while you can't be hit. Take a look at this clip. In this position, I'm in cover and I'm able to shoot whoever I see. While this clip, I'm here and I'm also able to shoot whoever I see. But I also get shot and ultimately die. How would you reposition in this case? While there are multiple choices, at the end of the day, any choice would be better than staying there out in the open. Overextending. This is a massive point. If you're holding a great position, you never want to break it. But this doesn't always mean just to defend. This could also mean staying in an area for too long, separating you from your teammates, and also rushing a defended cash out. While defending, you need to position yourself where you have coverage of different areas, while also being safe from projectiles like gas. Generally, you will want to stay as close as you can to your cash out, but for trickier places like elevators or small rooms, you will likely want to position yourself outside the room as you will get faced with a lot of destruction and AoE that can easily wipe your whole team. For attacking a cash out, however, depending on the amount of time you have, slower is better. Use your grenades, canisters, and poke them down. Rushing in too fast will welcome you into a no man zone and you will likely get obliterated if the enemy team is positioned correctly. You will also want to try to go in together as a team, acting as a huge wave of damage they just can't face after they've become low on health. If you don't have too much time though, going in as a team will make it that much stronger than going in and dying one after another. Going off from this, as I always say, teams that stay together, slay together? <laughs> I don't know. But being off on your own is a risky game and 3v3s are always better than a 2v3 or a 1v3. While there are moments where you can branch out a bit and score some damage or kills, typically you won't be getting out of it as much as what you would be together. Spawn points. Leading off from positioning, I do want to get into spawn points as these two factors are pretty similar in context. So as you play, you'll begin to see different areas you can spawn. This can help in like so many different ways, from knowing where you will spawn and knowing where enemies will spawn. You can dictate what you will do next. For example, let's say you're defending a point here. There are three spawn points to consider. The bridge, building, and at the back. Thinking of these spawn points, you now know where to look in order for you to stall enemy teams from getting to you, but you will also know where you will spawn when you're attacking. This will let you plan a bit ahead on what you need to do and where you need to go. And as a side note, you will always spawn close to a cash out, so sometimes you can wait a bit to respawn and you can get closer to that clutch. Utilizing equipment. Now this point is fairly common to understand and I bet most of you likely do this already, but I still wanted to talk about it a bit. First things first is to just use them more. Often I will see myself go a whole team fight without using any grenades or forgetting to plant mines and also improperly placing turrets and shields. 
So let's get into it. So firstly, it's just APM or actions per minute. Simply just upkeeping your cooldowns will go such a long way. And using your throwables before entering a fight can massively increase your chances of winning. But just be careful of a few things. The dome and shield walls can bounce back throwables, and throwing fire or gas grenades can also stop you from taking a cash out. So try to time and place these in spots that can't inhibit you or your teammates. These can also be used defensively too though, as throwing gas or fire on a cash out can easily clutch out so many different games. Also, as another side note, if the player statue is in the energy part of the dome shield, you can't actually res with the defib, as the shield will block it. So make sure to pick up the statue and place it just to the right or left. Team wiping. This feels the worst when it happens. And it's the worst thing that can happen in any ranked game. Well, in face value, you don't really want your team to be off the map. You also don't want to lose the money that you've made. So many times I have lost after getting almost all the cash outs in the game, just to team wipe a couple times and lose all of our progress. If you're the last guy standing, try your best to just avoid fights and wait to get your teammates back up. Aim. Lastly, and likely most importantly, is your aim. Aim for any FPS is always going to matter, and while game sense and strategy can go a very long way, if you just can't hit your targets, you will always be at a disadvantage. So here's a couple of tips that you can take with you. Firstly, always try to get Headshots. Headshots in this game are incredibly important, and you can take out whole teams in seconds if you can land them. So whether you practice in aim labs or even in the practice range, any type of warm up and practice will go a long way. Also as a quick side tip, lowering your sensitivity can actually help. Pro players constantly say that using more of your forearm can give you better accuracy than just your wrists. For me though, I use either the scar or the revolver, and I go back and forth between different targets in the practice range. This may not give you a complete one-to-one -one experience for games, but it will give you a relaxed space to practice and train. I suggest probably doing this for around 10 minutes before going into any ranked game before you start to play. But yeah guys, that's about all I have. So let me know if you guys learned anything and what you think is most important when grinding from lower ranks. So yeah, stick around and look out for new future guides and some fun challenges. And yeah, bye.